Hi, my name's Alan Smith and I'm going to be running through some of the details of the Global Render Lab that we're going to be running at the Global Windows ASL Bootcamp. The lab is going to be creating ray traced images. You can see the image uh, in this screen. There's a lot of uh, reflection uh, and refraction uh, in the glass and across all of the objects. It takes a long time to create uh, an image like this. And the reason is that for every pixel in the image we've got to do a lot of calculations to be able to figure out how the uh, light source uh, will be falling on those uh, particular objects and how it will be creating the image, uh, what type of colours we'll be getting, if there's going to be any refle reflection or reflection and if there's going to be any uh, shadows. The render times for films can be uh, quite excessive. The Crudes took about 9,200 years of uh, render time and had 250 terabytes uh, of storage for all of the image data used. So back in the 90s I used to experiment uh, with a text-based ray tracer called Polyray and I always wanted to create a, an image, an animation of a pin board but back in the day uh, it took a long time to do that. It would have taken months to create a, a reasonable animation. So I'm using a text-based ray tracer called Polyray. If I define a viewpoint uh, like this and define some objects, it will create an image like this. I then use a C-sharp application to be able to generate the pins in a pin board, add some glass and a frame around it. Now to set the depth of the pins, I can take an image and then I can use the image to determine whereabouts the pins are going to be, uh, how far they're going to come out of the pin board, and that gives me the three-dimensional image there. Now using the connect sensor and selecting a depth range, I can actually use the connect depth data from myself to actually animate myself and project myself onto the pin board. So this is a depth image that's come from connect of my daughter and I. And this is what happens when we use that depth image from connect to actually set the depth in the, of the pins in the pin board. So rendering an individual frame uh, can take uh, up to about 5 or 10 minutes. So producing a, a proper animation of 2000 frames is going to take uh, almost a week. So this diagram shows the high level architecture of the application. In the various uh, bootcamp locations we're going to have uh, connect sensors uh, with PCs. And these are going to be capturing and uploading the animations to Windows as or storage. We're going to be using uh, tables and queues and blobs. The blobs are going to be storing the image data and animations. The queues are going to be storing the work jobs and we've got a few statistics in the actual uh, tables. So when the animation goes in, a message will be placed on the queue and one of these worker roles in any of the actual deployed applications will start to actually dequeue the messages and process uh, the uh, frames in the animation. And once the actual uh, animation is completed, it will be published uh, to Windows Azure Media Services and it will be available on a Windows Azure website for, uh, for browsing. We'll be using a SQL uh, database in Windows Azure to drive the actual statistics uh, for the website. And I'm going to be set up Mission Control uh, in Stockholm, Sweden, just keeping an overview on the entire application, monitoring it and uh, resolving any issues uh, that we have with the deployment. So anybody can contribute to this. If you're attending one of these events, you can get the deployment package and deploy that, uh, which is going to be configured for your actual uh, region uh, and country. And your worker roles will uh, actually help to render all of the animation jobs that are coming in from different uh, locations. And that will result in more animations being published to the website. Looking a bit deeper into the architecture, what the Connect Capture application is going to be generating is a series of these depth frames and it's going to be generating a queue message. So the depth frames go into blob storage, a queue is then placed on the queue. The worker role will dequeue the animation message and then it will use all of the depth image to actually generate these scene files that are going to be used for Polyray to create the animations. These will be loaded into blob storage and a corresponding message for each frame will be placed onto the render queue. An application called Polyray, which is a text-based ray tracer, will be used to actually take the scene input file and generate the frame for each animation. And it's these frames that we'll be seeing on the actual frame counts in the website. So once the frame is rendered, the actual JPEG image will be placed into blob storage. And if the frame is the final frame in an animation, then an encode message will be placed on the encode queue. For the encode jobs, uh, the message will be dequeued uh, by the uh, worker role, and then we'll basically download all of the actual frames that make up the animation, all of the JPEG files. We use virtualdub.exe, which can read in all of the JPEG files, and that will create an AVI file. The AVI file is then uploaded into Windows as or media services, and it's then encoded into an MPEG-4 format. We also update the database to say that the animation has, has been completed, and the animation will be visible on the website.